Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for all the many blessings, the food that we're about to partake of, blessings for the nourishment of our bodies. Thank you for all the friendships that we make during our everyday lives. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do you have there? Gravy? Chick, uh, uh, turkey and dressing? Who made that? Kay Cordes. My favorite turkey, well, second favorite turkey and dressing maker. My wife's my first. This is uh, cream cheese and ripe olives and chipped beef and onions and sour cream. What do you call that? Chipped beef dip, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I've just i seen different recipes with cheap, chipped beef, but then I added a few things that I like to taste. This is corn casserole I brought today. Um, I just call it a corn casserole, but actually it was given to me by a really good friend here in Conway Lee. So uh, in our cookbook, it's called Lee's Corn Casserole. She gave me this recipe about 20 years ago, and I've made it ever since for Thanksgiving and Christmas. My family loves it. It's delicious. It's very, very easy to make, and you can make it at least a couple of days ahead of time. Um, so it's a really good, good dish to carry somewhere. It's great. I'm Polly Miller, and this coconut cake is one of the things that I always bring to the luncheons here at Pam McDowell Properties. I start by using a Duncan Hines Better Recipe Cake Mix and I bake it according to the directions on the back of the box. And while it's baking, I mix the icing up and that consists of two cups of sugar and I use the extra fine sugar, eight ounce container of Cool Whip, eight ounces of sour cream and 14 ounces of coconut. Mix that together really well, put it in the refrigerator to chill. And once the cake has cooled completely, I split the layers uh, to make four layers and I ice the cake by layer and keep it refrigerated. It's so good and it's so easy. Um, I made the dressing right here, which is actually an old family recipe, but sad to say I've never made it on my own before and I had to call my mom to find out exactly what she puts into it. So we'll see how that turns out. And then I made the green bean bundles right here. And my sister-in-law, who is actually from Conway, she gave us the recipe. And I normally put them in bundles, roll them in bacon, but I didn't have time this year. So I just crumbled it on top of it. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. This is an old fashioned Cornish slice cake. It's been in my family for many, many years. Um, it actually, when people say they don't like fruit cakes, well this is an alternative to that because it has orange slices and chopped nuts and coconut and lots of butter and, and good things in it. But it goes way back and as far as I can remember, we've always had orange slice cake during the holidays. And um, I hope you can get the recipe and um, add it to your family traditions as well. Tell me your secret for your great turkey. <laughs> I use the syringes and shoot it full of Creole butter so it'll be good and moist. And then I put it in a roaster pan and roast it for about four hours. It's tender and moist. Dear. Okay, Kevin, we've got uh, potato candy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was introduced to potato candy when I first got married. Uh, Dennis and I went, got married and we came back from our honeymoon and then went next week and went to Thanksgiving dinner with his parents. Mm -hmm. And for the first time that I had potato candy and I'd never heard of it. And it's very simple, it has three ingredients. It's very easy to make. Um, so we celebrate 35 years of potato candy this month. Okay. And, uh, What's the, tell me how you make it. You take a potato the size of an egg mm -hmm. and boil it mm -hmm. and then let it cool and take the skin off and then you mash it and add your powdered sugar until it becomes dough-like. Then you take that and spread it out and then like pie crust, yeah. roll it out with a roller like pie crust and then put your crunchy peanut butter layer on top. Then you just roll it up like a jelly roll yeah. and slice the slices. Right. So you don't have to cook anything but your little potato. This is a brown butter pecan pie and it is a recipe that I got from my sister. The trick to it is to t take three-fourths of a stick of butter and put it in a little saucepan on medium-low heat and do not stir it, just let it brown. It takes about eight minutes and that's the main difference in this and any other pecan pie. So, uh, makes it very good. 
This is a beef brisket that's been trimmed um, fairly substantially so that there's not a whole lot of fat on it. We first had this when Zeddy brought it to my house back in um, February, and it's, um, I think they call it beer brisket. But you take a three, four, five pound brisket, add onions and uh, bay leaves, and uh, then pour a can of beer, uh, chili sauce, brown sugar, and um, thyme all over it. And you put it in the oven at 225 for about six hours. You turn it off and let it sit about another two to three hours. And then you have a perfect beer brisket. Coconut cream pie. Yeah. And this is my coconut cream pie. Everything's made from scratch. The crust, the filling. Um, the crust recipe came from my husband's grandfather, and it has lots of secrets that I can't tell anybody. And the coconut cream filling is one of my specialties, and I don't share that recipe either, but it's going to be good. Hope everybody enjoys it. Happy holidays.